this tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Started with animation. Hi folks, we're at the beginning of April in 2020, the peak of the coronavirus in the so-called Western world. So we have lots of time to spend with interesting and creative things. Maybe you can use this tutorial in order to help me advance a little bit because character animation is not my uh, big strength. Anyway, something which puzzled me for many years actually is how to make a character walk in a not straight line, but uh, like in a, in, a, in a curved line, for example, around a circle. And I found lots of tutorials, actually hundreds, about walk cycles, which all basically show how a character walks straight, which is pretty trivial once you understand the whole principle about uh, one leg being planted on the floor while the other one moves and uh, then you turn the whole thing round. But uh, in a circle, nobody could answer me that. And uh, in the motion capture date world, you find all characters walk, ne the characters never walk in straight lines, they always walk in sort of curved lines and they jump and then they land in another direction, etc. But motion capturing doesn't help us here because we need to animate a character by hand walking along a sort of line. You can kind of automate this with a legacy command in Maya, which I demonstrated in another tutorial, walking around corners. It's not really satisfying. It's too old, actually, and uh, we need to find a better solution. And this is how I would go about it. That's uh, something I sort of found out now. There's a little hack to it, actually. We need to switch this on here, down here at the bottom right. This icon is called Auto Key. We go to Windows, Settings, Preferences and Preferences. Because we need, under Settings, set the working units from centimeters to meters. That uh, makes the grid much bigger. These are two meters, and before that it was two centimeters. <laughs> And the characters are sort of 1.8 meters high. So let's introduce a character now. Windows, General Editors and Content Browser. And here under Animation you find Rigs. And they are built into Maya, so you, everybody should be able to locate them. And um, for example, Eric is the one we choose. When we get closer to him, we see that he has a grey outfit and uh, when we click here, we see Maya loading the texture. And actually we don't want that because it's too black. We don't see things nicely when the trousers are all black. So let's uh, undo this. Next thing I want to point you to is this part. If you don't see this, go to Rigging here. And under Rigging, you go to Skeleton and Human IK. This brings you this um, menu here. We have a character called Eric Rigged and our source is the Control Rig. This is basically what we see. If you see this all grayed out, something is wrong with uh, your scene. You need to see Eric Rigged and the, his source being the Control Rig, this one. We see three green dots and actually they are the ones we're dealing with this in this uh, context here but we could also select this part here which is that left shoulder and um, move it down like this but we won't do it we just concentrate on the feet the feet um, have a speciality and in many uh, rigs you have that speciality when you click on the blue icons and move them up and down, you see that something with the knee happens and you see that wonderful motion here, a rotation ba basically about the ankle. 
But we don't want to use it either because we'll deal with this one and this is basically these two icons here for for the feet because they don't do anything about rolling they just do stepping and that's enough for now later on we can use these things to fine-tune things like the blue arrows here which rotate the knee now I want to make him a little bit more relaxed I just move the arm down if you just move him down you get kind of it looks uh, it feels a little bit strange as if you stretch his arm too far and the reason is forward kinematics and inverse in kinematics and we're dealing with inverse kinematics that means this is the end of our inverse kinematics handle where we actually invoke all the rotations here at the shoulder and uh, at the elbow and it's better to relax him right here and move move the arm down like this and I do the same with this arm here not just down ju inside down much nicer eventually in a walk you would have to concentrate on the hands but not in our experiment now we're almost done with the preparation I just want to select the geometry press the key F8 and now the vertices are selected I want to select the faces right mouse click face because I want to delete lots of faces I just don't need them here select these ones and I unselect these ones here because I want to see a little bit of the hip and I press delete it looks horrible I know press F8 back in the object selection but uh, this is uh, the way I can concentrate on the on the legs and on the feet now go to the top window and um, here I draw a line basically I start here and I go here 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 and here I won't actually animate him walk along the whole way only half the way so you get the point but uh, you will be quite pleased with it I hope and as I said we're going to concentrate on these three dots the problem I've always had is this one when I select the hip and move it over here my character flies not nice when I do the same thing with the legs it does not really step it does a strange dance and uh, this is not what we want to do that's um, why everybody in the walk cycle world lowers the hip just a little bit and then you're free to move the leg a little bit forward like this or backward like this before it actually leaves the ground and we don't want it to leave the ground I found that the hip is really the factor which gives me most problems and that's why I lower the hip at the very beginning of the animation frame zero quite drastically okay uh, just wait a second uh, I got interrupted um, this morning I took this photograph it's a petals of a magnolia tree I like the scent of this plant very much and uh, of course it's a beautiful plant the nice thing about computer animation and computer graphics is that it's so versatile you can do so many things so when we talk about uh, making steps around a corner I'll come back to it in a second uh, we can also do totally different things like this <laughs> these are the is this my petal fo photograph in substance alchemist now and in substance alchemist you have uh, weird things like the water level that's pretty amazing I just I'm always carried away I raised the displacement map here just a, a little bit I mean only this part here it's just it's just this water effect we could have uh, tons of other effects anyway uh, I got carried away sorry back to the walk around the corner I thought I needed markers to tell me 
how far the legs walk per step because otherwise you sort of improvise too much and you make long long steps and shorter steps etc so i try this approach here and mm, well i have no idea about what's coming out of it and uh, every time i try it out uh, i get a totally different result it depends probably on the mood of the day or whatever so uh, these are just markers which we will use for placing our foot. So here is the depressing skeleton, which is with the hips very low down. And now I start animating. This is the right leg and this is the hip here. And um, I set a keyframe for all of them, even for the left leg. Now I move the uh, the... the right leg forward and actually I can move the hip a little bit further up and uh, since this motion has to do a, a little bit with uh, leaning forward move the hip a little bit forward so everything is very crude here I place the keyframe for the left leg and I need to move the hip in order to help here the hip will be raised later now with the in the top view i see the positioning of the feet and the hip so i can modify things a little bit better and as you can see this kind of works and the left foot is at my first marker when you do these things you need to plant the feet so when you move the left leg like now uh, you need to plant the right foot. The right foot, foot must not do anything, so you need to set a keyframe at, in my case, 25 frames, which is one second. It's going to be a slow walk. And um, now I slowly start making that turn. And I can indicate that by rotating the foot. This already tells the viewer that this person is not going to continue in a straight line. The hip is extremely critical in all character animations and I did a tutorial about just the hip. Maybe you want to watch it. There are a few things to consider here and to keep in mind. When you move the hip or the feet, don't use the up arrow. Don't move them up or down. Just let the feet slide on the ground and help the feet with the hips in order to keep sort of balance with the world. But don't move the feet up. And when you rotate the feet, you need to be in a world coordinate system and I'll show you later when we get to this problem where we need to change something about the rotation you see it's very delicate does he lean towards the inner part of that curve when he starts walking into that curve well I don't really know and I don't really care because we want to continue here and um, basically, feet forward, one after the other. Don't forget to set the keyframes when uh, a foot is planted and is planted while the other foot moves. You need to set two keyframes. One is at the start of the move of the other leg and uh, one is at the end of the motion of the other leg. Otherwise, you will run into sliding problems. And the top view is always good for keeping, well, for example, the hip in the direction of the curve. Um, always stepping forward in 25 frame steps. And now I'm at frame 100. So four seconds. He's totally out of balance. I can help with the rotation of the hip and I can move the hip further to the inside of that circle half circle and 
again a little bit forward because he leans forward when he is actively stepping. You lean back with the hip when you stop your walk. The feet slide on the floor, which is something we'll deal with just a little bit later. Just a brief look at how this works. Feet are planted while the other foot makes the step, so that's quite okay. Now we actually can go a little bit looking at details. Like moving the, the feet up while the leg is moving forward. This is a very delicate part too and you can actually raise it very fast at the very beginning when the leg starts to move forward. You can raise it quite a bit. Uh, this makes a walk totally different from other walks depending on how high you lift the foot. As we discussed earlier, we don't care about the rolling of the foot and um, this is a, a thing for another tutorial because we basically want to make him turn around that corner. Now I'm dealing with the right leg and he steps slightly up, which is just fine. I think now it's time to lift the hip. That's a fun part because the hip was always too low and as you remember we started very low in order to get the whole walking process working. So I step from one keyframe for the hip to the next with the icon on the bottom right and I move the hips just up. And you can do this in the animation in the graph editor, in the, in the animation and menu you find the graph editor, you can do it there to raise the hip to a more or less standard level, but uh, I like to do it by hand. And basically it is always at the same height, slowly from time to time moves up and down, which is just fine, which is more or less natural. When we lift the right leg, our hip slightly rotates to the other side and that's something which you can exa exaggerate by doing this. So the left leg is up so the hip is down. And now you see the coordinate system problem because we're in the world coordinate system we need to go to the object coordinate system because otherwise we rotate the hip in a totally different axes and we want to rotate the hip in just that axis which is unique to that hip. Maybe that was a little bit complicated that explanation really not good but um, okay we have that walk now and I show you a rendering of the walk and of course the walk is not perfect at all and you need lots of refinements especially when you uh, start working on the top of that character with the arms and with the hands and with the shoulders but uh, now you know how to basically with three handles only the two feet and the hip to move a, no a character around a corner. Do you want me to show you the rendering now? I'm really a little bit embarrassed, but uh, well, here it is. Have a nice day.